Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Digital Dreams ICT Academy YouTube channel. And I welcome you all to the year 2023. This is a very fantastic year because we have a whole lot of exciting new technology that is taking the world by storm. And one of those technologies that is taking the world by storm is ChatGPT. We all have heard about ChatGPT. It's, it has been in the news for over two months right now. So the issue is, why is everybody talking about ChatGPT? And what is even ChatGPT? But before we continue, please, Subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button that is under this page. Okay, and I know you have done that. Do that and um, be notified anytime we have a new exciting video. Fine, we're going to delve into what is really chat GPT. Um, one of the things that uh, people always ask is what is even GPT in the chat GPT? And I think I will actually uh, explain that. The GPT in chat GPT is generative pre-trained transformer. It means that this AI model, the artificial intelligence model, which ChatGPT is built on, can take some pre-trained answers, can scout a whole lot of data, and use that to transform text and videos to generate new things. That is a solely powerful tool. And in as much as it can do that, what it means is that ChatGPT, right, based on its AI model, can generate human-like text. Human-like text that is indistinguishable from what a human can answer, who are provided. So it means that if you ask ChatGPT a question, it will be able to generate an answer that you can't distinguish from what a human will have answered. And that is a very powerful tool. It is so powerful that it is taking the whole world by storm. But some people will say, basically, it's just a chatbot. We have had chatbots since the 90s. It is not it's just like a chatbot. Comparing just ChatGPT with a chatbot you have always seen is like comparing an analog phone with a smartphone. In as much as both can make calls, a smartphone can do so much more than you can imagine with an analog phone. A smartphone can do calls. It can check, do emails. You can research, search the internet with it. And it can do so much things that you, you can't even do a comparison with, between that and an analog phone. The same way you can compare a chatbot with chat GPT. So at this stage, with chat GPT, there is a whole big vista open. I think we are still scratching the surface. Scientists are still thinking, what exactly can we use chat GPT for? And what are the limits of what it can do? And the beautiful part is that it is still evolving. This week, the OpenAI, which are the makers of ChatGPT, released ChatGPT4. And the new feature added, plus a whole lot of data which it has been pre-trained on, makes it even 10 times more powerful than ChatGPT 3.5, which the whole world has been talking about. So at this point, when you look at what ChatGTP is and what the power is going to unleash on the world, we need to be able to ask ourselves, what can we really use ChatGPT for? And I'll say we can use it in so many spheres, in so many areas. And it is only for us to open our mind to what is coming. And as innovators and as people, we need to be able to look at this technology and see how we can even maximize it. Let me even just blow your mind a bit. Everybody has been talking about ChatGTP that it can generate articles that's in different areas. And in education, people are afraid that probably students will use ChatGPT to cheat. So when you give them an essay to write, instead of them writing, they can pass it on to ChatGPT and ChatGPT will generate the essay for them. But we don't need to be all afraid of the negative consequences. We can actually even look at more on the positives. If we look at probably education and look at what ChatGPT can do, you could understand one thing. As a teacher, ChatGPT is a powerful tool for you. In many areas of what learning, it is so difficult having illustrations of what we are teaching. If, for instance, we are teaching languages and we want to uh, explain a sentence like, um, Mr. John is running away from the house, right? And um, we will need a picture to explain, illustrate this, so that we can show it to the students and ask the student probably, uh, can you explain what is happening in this picture in the language we are trying to teach the kid? You will see that if you actually give this query to the charges, you will be like, create a picture of a man running away 
from a house, you will see that it will generate a photorealistic image of such. And you could also put it in different style. You can decide to be, it has to be in a cartoon style. It has to be a photorealistic image. You, it can also be in maybe a mix, maybe an expressionist style of painting. And these are things that ChatGPT can create. You can also look at, as in education, a student can actually use ChatGPT to prepare for an examination. So you could actually be able to give ChatGPT a mathematical question, right, in algebra. And he will give you step-by-step -step way of solving that and land to the answer, right? This is what we would have been doing if we, the school student teacher is there, of explaining step-by-step -step on how to solve, it, solve a mathematical problem. But ChatGTV can do that. So you see the use case. So the student can actually use ChatGTV to learn mathematics, right? So that is another use case in education. And also in creating assessments as a teacher, you could actually tell ChatGTV to set a question for you on a field that you want the student to actually uh, answer questions on and you have such questions which you can feed to the student. Now, Chat GTP can also be trained to look at the answers, the questions and essays a student has written and mark such essays whether he's making a whole lot of points or not. So as in education, we have seen a whole lot of ways Chat GTP can really, really improve it. So we shouldn't all really be afraid of uh, the negative impact of a new technology. We should also look at ways to maximize the positives. And that is just education. If we move to arts, there is a whole lot of creative things we can use ChatGPT to do. Example, we can use ChatGPT to write music. And why you say uh, write music, that means probably it's going to be just one style of music produced. You could actually even use ChatGTV to spoil your creativity. Example, I can say tell ChatGTV to actually create, for me, a, a new song in Afrobeat about Fela, and it's called Wola Kuti. And you will see that ChatGTV can create a song about him. Or we can use it to even write poem. We can tell ChatGTV to write me a poem about climate change, and it creates such poems. You could also use ChatGTP to create a music score. And these are things it can really do. You could also use it to spoil your creativity by probably asking ChatGTP to actually create an art for you. And you could now look at the art and be able to what, even modify the art or even use that as a basis for creating further. So an entertainment is a game changer. And it's something that we all need to explore. When it comes to healthcare, child GTP also excels. So you see something like summarizing the patient's record, the record of a patient, is one of the things that child GPT can do for you. So instead of reading like 60 pages of a patient's record, you can pass it to child GPT and it can be able to give you the summary of the patient's record. And you can use that for your diagnosis. Another part where child GTP excels is in scheduling of appointments. So the, the a patient can actually talk to the child GTP and can schedule an appropriate appointment with the doctor for him or her. Also, in the part of preliminary diagnosis, you could actually be able to look at the different symptoms of a patient and pass such symptoms to child GPT and it can give you a preliminary diagnosis that you could now use to even investigate further and be able to get at the actual diagnosis of a patient. Now, these are whole new areas that are not available before. And that is why everybody is making a whole noise about ChatGPT. Another area the ChatGPT is becoming so powerful is in the area of personal assistance. Most of the personal assistants we have now are built on AI models, but ChatGPT now takes it further. The ChatGPT4 can take images. Now, if it means that it takes image as input, that means that the very camera that takes picture, this picture can be sent to the chat GPT backend, and it can be able to look at the image and be able to what, give an answer. Example, for instance, in your house and you have a robot assistant and your door is open and you are leaving for work, with a picture of your door open, chat GPT can look at the picture and understand that your door is open and they can send you an email that hey, your door is open, please, will you mind locking it? And these are different things that we could actually use chat GPT to do. And the area of being looking at weather, um, scheduling appointments, um, giving even suggesting 
menus, you could actually recipes you can actually cook in the house, are things which you could actually, so you could see that you can, can wake up today and ask ChatGPT, what am I going to cook? And it provides a recipe. These are things that we could actually start looking for in the future of what ChatGTP can really do. But there's also a whole lot of area ChatGTP comes in handy. That good part is translation. ChatGTP can actually do a translation, live translation on the go. You went to a new country and you could now snap even uh, maybe a signpost and ChatGTP can do that translation for you because right now it, it accepts pictures as inputs. So it can translate for you what the sign says. And you could actually be, be recording a conversation and send that to ChatGPT, and it sends you back not only the translation, but the text. So when you are actually doing, talking about proper speech to text, ChatGPT also quite excels in it. And the last but not the least is that ChatGPT can actually be used to for generating computer codes. So in programming, it can be used to debug codes. So you have your code and you paste it on ChatGTP. It can look at that and tell you where what the error is and you could not be able to fix it. So it's going to form a tool that will actually help programmers reduce the time spent at debugging and fixing errors. And this is just the beginning of it. As you can see, ChatGTP will become more powerful as time goes. It will keep growing and new features will be added to it to make it much better and have more use cases. We will still be here to explain the new features and the new tools that we are available due to ChatGPT. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get notified anytime we release a new video that explains any of these technologies and make it clear to you as time goes on. Thank you.